President Bongbong Marcos says his administration has no plans to renew the country's membership in the International Criminal Court. The ICC is a very different uh, kind of a court. Kaya pinag-aralan muna, sinabi ko sa inyo, pag-aralan nyo na mabuti yung procedure para tama yung gagawin natin. Uh, kasi hindi natin, siyempre, uh, kailangan baka ma-misinterpret yung ating mga ginagawa. One human rights expert sees no surprise in the Marcos administration's decision not to rejoin the International Criminal Court. Cooperation is ideal, but it is not something that will derail an investigation. Okay. Uh, when the IC, when the Philippine government, uh, you know, got out of the ICC, that doesn't mean the ICC no longer has jurisdiction of the cases in the Philippines that were committed when it was a member. The ICC right now remains as the only viable avenue for victims of the drug war to pursue justice. And the, the decision by the, uh, by the President Marcos to not rejoin the ICC, while it is not relevant to the investigation itself, that prolongs the wait for justice. The Philippines is not rejoining the International Criminal Court. President Marcos does not see the point of an ICC probe on human rights abuses here since the government, he says, is already investigating. What's the implication of these developments we discuss in this episode of The Chiefs? Welcome to The Chiefs. Ako po si Robbie Alampay. Kasama po natin online. Ami Pamintuan of the Philippine Stars is joining us from the port area in Manila. Ami. Happy Tuesday. Uh, good evening. Hmm. Ano bang Not very happy. Oh, bakit? Ano bang balita dyan? Eh, pagka-detect ng monkeypox, ngayon naman meron na tayo ng Centaurus, oh, ano? Centaurus. The most transmissible <laughs> so far of the Omicron sub-variants. Hmm. Kanina nga, kausap ko na naman si Guido David ng Okta Research. Yeah. Sinasabi ko nga, kaya pa ba nating bilangin? Ako, personal, I can't track anymore. Ilang sub-variants oh, ang tinatrack natin. Oh, nga, pero ito daw yung pinaka matindi at saka mukhang naapektuhan yata even even children although hindi naman yata ganun ka kasama yung infection oh, oh. as mm. in the first variants talaga. Oh, but the, uh, uh, but the other thing sabi ni Professor Guido David and he was quoting uh, if I got that right he was uh, quoting Father Nick Ostriaco who is the uh, 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 molecular biologist in the Octa research uh, group that uh, they were also saying na one, the other side of the concern could be that it's not just the virality of uh, Centaurus that could be a concern. It could, we could also be seeing the effects of the waning efficacy in the population already. Yes, yes. saka yung, yung di ba merong mga speculation na we might need a completely new vaccine for this new subvariant emerging eh. Hmm. Huh? Hmm. Ano pang mga, ano pang mga nasa front page bukas? Well, meron yatang kidnap na na iniimbestigahan pa ng PNP no merong parang may kidnapping sa BGC mm. CEO of a pharmaceutical firm mm. pero yeah. wala pa tayo masyado mga detalye diyan wala w wala pa eh pero mm. may nakita na yatang ano uh, well of course it's a kidnapping hindi sila magbibigay ng detalye but of course it's always alarming kapag nagkaka ganyan na naman na problema especially in Metro Manila no Mm -hmm. uh, tapos, uh, of course, we are talking about uh, the, the decision of this government. We've been talking about it since yesterday. It's a conversation we hope yes. we can continue today. President Marcos uh, now very clearly saying that he has no intention of rejoining the ICC. But he also said, di ba, parang sinabihan niya rin daw ang kanyang legal team na pero pag-aralan natin. We want to be, uh, to be very circumspect also in what we're saying here. A correct response, no? Mm. Kasi pinangangatawan na naman nila na our justice system is working. And if you listen to Menardo Guevara, no, sabi niya, hindi naman to deferment talaga dang, well, in so many words, ang sinasabi niya, talaga lang namang mabagal ang justice system natin. <laughs> Kaya daw ganon. <laughs> na 52 pa lang out of the 6,200 mm. cases, saka mm. lima pa lang na naka-file in court. No? 
Sabi niya, talagang ganyan eh, mabagal yung ano natin. Well, hindi so, naman talaga may pagkakaila yun. Mabagal naman talaga. I think we were all on the same page with regards to bagal. But the other indicators that people were pointing to was in the six years, sa lahat na sinasabi nila, only one uh, conviction uh, so far. Mm -hmm. Nagkataon pa, this has to do yung kay Kian De Los Santos, na yes. nagkataon may CCTV. Di ba? Talaga namang yun din naman ang tanong ng mga tayo. Kung walang CCTV, hindi naman natin alam kung matutuloy yun. And then the other indicator that people point out is the acknowledgments of the previous administration before the United Nations all came rather late, di ba? After na ang tagal-tagal nang sinasabi ng mga tao and uh, suddenly there was all this talk of you know, what are the implications at the international level if government does not even at least acknowledge this. Eh, yun na nga, di na acknowledge na siya ka. Yun na nga, puro belated eh. Yun ang pag-uusapan ngayon. Mm. Pwede ba yung better late than never? Or, well, yun ang sinasabi ng gobyerno ngayon. Na, tingnan natin. Anyway, Justice Secretary Remulia said, magpapadala din naman daw ng information to the ICC. So, we don't know exactly kung ano yeah. yung mm. magiging, ano, no? magiging uh, stand mm. ng gobyerno. And the uh, senators, some of the senators are saying they, they might talk to the president to ask him to reconsider his decision or at least rethink the decision. Mm -hmm. no, because uh, that was one of the things we were discussing with Kaloy Konde of Human Rights Watch yesterday. Uh, the returning as a party to the ICC is one thing, but cooperation may yet be another area, di ba? I, I, hindi naman ibig sabihin na hindi ka party, ibig sabihin hindi ka na rin cooperate especially given that the ICC has stressed that you're no longer being a party has nothing to do with whether or not we can proceed because under the ICC uh, uh, rules and under the Rome Statute, uh, investigations that started before the pullout from the treaty will continue. Pero ano nga bang magagawa kung ayaw mag-cooperate? Uh, no? Medyo mahirap yung investigation, di ba? Mm. At least our, our Justice Secretary and our Solicitor General are saying there will be some form of cooperation dahil yun nga, yun nga, yun nga yata sinabi ni President Marcos, we will be providing some information, some mm. information, magko-coordinate din siguro sila. Mm. So hindi natin alam kung anong mangyayari dyan. So oh, yun naman dalawang, yun din yung dalawang tanong, ha, diba? What are the gestures if they are in fact fairly, to, if you can fairly call it gestures yes. or sincere uh, sincere actions on the side of on the side of this government. Let's also remember it is a new administration. Whatever mm. you may think of the previous administration, the fact is this is a new administration. It's quite early to say na they're unwilling and unable. Diba? Something that's yes. quite crucial for the ICC to stress. Saka ang deadline naman September 8 pa, no? There's mm. still some time to to finalize the response of the government. Mm. Anyway, Oh, anyway, pagtutuloy po natin itong usapan na ito. We're having some technical difficulties. We're hoping to have our guest with us uh, in a bit. In the meantime, we'll start our conversation with our guest after the break. Keep it right here on One News. The Chiefs will be right back.
Welcome back. The Chiefs now joining us is Human Rights Watch senior researcher Carlos Conde. Mr. Conde, welcome once again to the Chiefs. Hi. Hi. Hi, Robbie. Hi. Mm. Hi, Ma'am. I'm Amy. Mm. Eh, eh, Kaloy, tuloy natin yung usapan natin kahapon because, I mean, uh, again, I, let's, let's turn to this matter of a government billing, being, being unwilling, unable to, to investigate, di ba? And mm -hmm. certainly we understand the concerns with, with President Duterte's administration, but let's proceed mm -hmm. from the perspective and the arguments of this current government. No? It's a new government. One month pa lang, yeah. di ba? Minanan nila to and so on. You can say all you want about them being allies with the Duterte's, but the reality is this is a new uh, government and they have every right to say that, look, it's been one month. How can you say that we are unwilling and we are unable? And in fact, they're saying we are willing, we are able, and it is in that context that we don't think it's, it's correct to let the ICC have first crack at looking at mm -hmm. um, these uh, killings under the Duterte administration. What do you say to that? Well, for one thing, Robbie, this is something, wala, hindi naman to na, just because this is a new administration doesn't mean it's a reset button mm -hmm. na look nila. Uh, and when you also take into account the fact that many of the personalities that they're now bringing in to try to respond to the ICC investigation are actually old guards of the uh, mm. Duterte administration, who were also very, very uh, knowledgeable and very, very privy to all the things that have happened uh, regarding this investigation. So it's not as if uh, they're back to square one. It's not as if they don't have any institutional, uh, you know, knowledge or, or insight into what's happening. And uh, let's also, I think, emphasize the fact that the DOJ, for instance, and the police, I mean, these are, they have their own, they, they, they had their own responses to the ICC investigation. Uh, they have their own resources to, uh, to try to uh, satisfy the requirements of the ICC, but uh, uh, they still fail to do it. So, talagang, you know, much as we want to cut this uh, new president some slack and give him the benefit of the doubt, because sadly na, one month pa lang, but the fact is that this case uh, is 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 uh, is really uh, that this needs to be continued by this administration. Hindi ito na, hindi sila nagreset ng button dito. Pero kaloy sabi naman ni uh, Sol Jen Menardo Rivera, who was the justice chief, sabi niya, eh, talaga namang mabagal yung criminal justice system natin, and it doesn't mean that the system isn't working. Sabi niya, which is also mm -hmm. true. But what do you say to that? Well. Actually, yung argument na medyo ano sila dito eh, medyo nga nakokontradict pa sila eh, because they're saying na, oh, the, the justice system in the Philippines, the judiciary is working perfectly fine, so there's no need for the ICC to intervene, quote-unquote, or to look into what's happening in the Philippines because, you know, our systems work. And then you have here, on the other hand, uh, Justice Secretary Guevara or ex-Justice Secretary Guevara saying na, uh, you know, may mga, may mga limitasyon. So, ang ano lang dito is that Hindi naman totoo na uh, unang-una, hindi totoo na naimbestigahan nila ng maayos itong mga sinasabi ng naimbestigahan nila. The ICC itself said, said that very clearly, na hindi nila nas, na satisfy yung requirement na binigay sa Philippine government for the referral. Kaya sila magpapatuloy ng investigation. Pangalawa, I think also, in this ingenious yung claim na nag-work naman yung justice system natin, uh, so bakit pa kayo makikialam? Because... Ang naka ang naka salang kasi ng mga kaso dito mamimi is at hindi naman ito mga ordinaryong kaso ng mga nasa korte. Ang mga kaso dito sa ICC ay very specific uh, on the drug war, on the Davao death squad killings. So on those cases, masasabi talaga natin na walang justice talaga na umiral, walang nangyaring uh, pagilitis, walang nangyaring pag uh, you know to take those responsible to 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 account. Kasi kusa drug war palang. Iisa pa lang ang naging, convic uh, naging uh, conviction ng isang korte on the thousands of cases. So, malinaw na yung principle ng complementarity na tinatawag nila na yun nga, our justice system is working, huwag na kayo makialam, malinaw na hindi totoo yun. Uh, kasi yun nga, itong mga thousands of cases ay hindi talaga na-investigahan natin, lalo, lalo at hindi umabot sa korte. Okay. Now, Kaloy, let's get to the pragmatics of that. Now, so, let's... I, I think everybody will will acknowledge that. But 
assuming na magtutuloy pa rin, and the ICC says na hindi nyo naman kami maaawat eh, tutuloy pa rin namin to with or without your, your cooperation. But what will that look like? I mean, in pragmatically and practically, what are the forms um, and modes by which an ICC investigation can continue if the government will not cooperate and will not let investigators in? But there's uh, there's certainly a, a you know a less than ideal situation, Robbie. No, na hindi pa payagan yung mga ICC investigators to come in. But let's not kid ourselves here. The ICC has its own resources to do an investigation, even without the cooperation of a country. Uh, they have the mandate and the resources to do that. Now, mabagal siguro ng medyo, pero meron talaga naman. And, and also, let's keep in mind, yung preliminary investigation ng ICC before, wala namang cooperation sa Philippine government yun eh. And, but mm. yet, they still managed to do some amount of investigation that led them to the determination na talagang merong kaso dapat. Okay. So, anong ginawa nila? Uh, you know, they cooperated with uh, civil society organizations. They touched base with the families of victims. Uh, merong mga members ng clergy na tumulong, I suppose. May mga CSOs, human rights defenders na tumulong sa mga biktima na to na magbigyan, magbigay ng uh, information sa ICC so that it can do its work. So, um, it's again, it's not ideal. Uh, they're working around uh, a, 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 a very difficult uh, predicament ng pag-iimbestiga nila, but they managed to do it. So, oh, but I will I will like emphasize the point, Robia, no, na if this government really wants accountability, at talaga naman dapat talagang makipag-cooperate sila, even if the IC, the Philippines is no longer a member of the ICC. It's accountability, it's human mm. rights. So what's so wrong about it? Ah, so yung, sa, kabilang, sa kabilang side lang nung, nung tanong na yun, if government does not want to, to cooperate, and let me stress that that's not the statement of the Marcos uh, government. They're saying we will not return to the ICC, but they, in fact, sabi pa nga ni President Marcos, let's be careful, di ba? Let's uh, pag-aralan natin ng mabuti. So that's not what they're saying. But on the other side of not cooperating, can government actually uh, be an obstacle to a, an ICC probe as best as they would want to carry it out? And what would be indicators that government is beyond not cooperating and is in fact actively uh, being an obstacle to ICC investigations? Well, there's a lot of scenarios for that, Robbie, uh, na maging obstacles sila. I mean, obviously one of them is just to not do anything. I mean, hmm. uh, given, you know, the, the, the problems that we have in our uh, justice system, in our criminal justice system, uh, not having the government cooperate in any investigation can be a very... Uh, I would say, uh, tremendous challenge, no? So, uh, yung palang paggawa, pag, hindi pag, uh, pagkilos na para tulungan ang ICC investigators, yung malaking bagay na yun. And we're not even saying na gagawin ng gobyerno is they will physically block the, uh, the ICC from coming here or that they will hide evidence from the ICC once they're here. I mean, we're not saying, we're not even saying that because... Uh, and, and we're not alleging that the government will, will do that, but there are possibilities. So I think... But can uh, they prevent, for example, Kaloy, can they prevent citizens? Can they prevent civil society? Can they prevent uh, um, civil society organizations from participating and cooperating, whether inside the country or outside? No, they can, but uh, especially kung nasa labas. I mean, uh, short of uh, preventing them physically from, you know, attending meetings or or what, uh, uh, I, don't, I don't think magagawa nila yun. Nahihirapan sila doon because citizens have the right to, to, naman, to, to complain, to seek redress. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, malinaw yun sa mga karapatan nila na if people want to seek redress, they can do so kahit sa anong venue na gusto nila. Now, uh, the other thing here is that uh, all this red tagging, all these, you know, attacks against human rights defenders and all this harassment against uh, families of the victims of the drug war, that may have some impact on their willingness to come out and uh, work with the ICC. So that's another thing, no? Um, pero, pero yun na, uh, mapupunta tayo sa tanong, uh, why, would you, why would anybody even want to do that? Na, to go to, to the extent of preventing people from, from uh, seeking redress. Well, today, sabi nga ni Justice Secretary Remulia, the government will provide uh, documents or records to the ICC. Ano magiging impact nun doon sa investigation? 
Well, Ma'am Amy, binigyan na kasi ng pagkakataon ang gobyerno na gawin yan hmm. to give the ICC prosecutors the documents that need uh, uh, dun sa deferral nga. Because if if only the government actually satisfy the requirement of the ICC for the documents, for really a significant investigation of the killings, uh, you know, the ICC could have easily said, okay, uh, okay, labas na kami. Hindi na namin tutuloy yung investigasyon kasi ginagawa naman talaga ng gobyerno yung dapat nilang gawin. Yung nangyari na ito sa ibang bansa eh, na tumigil ang, I think it was Colombia or Venezuela, na tumigil sila ng investigation because nasatisfy ng, gov ng government yung requirement nila for complementarity. Ngayon, binibigyan ngayon ang gobyerno hanggang September 8 to respond to the to the uh, statement by the, the by the ICC prosecutor and I don't know if the government still has anything that they can present to the ICC that they were not able to do the first time around. Uh, but let's see, you know, uh, mm. September 8 is still uh, a few weeks away. Mm. But but and I'm asking you to to speculate here um, uh, to that point that. Uh, what President Marcos said was that I'm not really inclined for us to return to the to the ICC. But uh, pag-aralan nyo pa, sabi niya, pag-aralan niya, mm -hmm. pag niyo pa because we want to be careful here. We want to be uh, responsible, proper um, in responding here. We want to understand all the implications. Why did he have to leave it open like that? I mean, what what are the risks to, to overstepping um, that they are also mindful um, and being, you know, uh, circumspect about. Well, uh, two things, Robbie. No, uh, siempre may nuance. Since you point, you pointed this out. Ang statement naman ni President Marcos is not. He said he was not going to. He just didn't say that he was not going to cooperate. Mm. He just said that he has no intention of going back to the ICC. You know, so th those are two different things. I think by saying that he he has no intention of going back to the ICC, it's safer a statement than saying. Uh, uh, you know, I will not cooperate with the ICC, and then bahala kayo dyan, uh, pipikilan lang kayo. Hindi naman ganun yung sinabi niya. So, uh, ang, ang magiging implication kasi if he did the uh, latter na sinabi niyang, uh, as with President Duterte before, sinabi niya talagang hindi niya, hindi siya makipag-cooperate, ang impact kasi nito sa international committee, sa international standing ng Pilipinas, magiging matindi. Uh, because right now, it's, it looks to us that Mr. Marcos um, has an... You know, he has his conscious uh, effort to present the Philippines in a good light uh, as international community. Mm. You know, uh, he said before uh, to the ambassadors to the UN that he is, uh, you know, he remains commi committed to his uh, obligations on human rights, uh, and that uh, he he did say to the United States uh, uh, government na, who raised the issue about human rights that he is willing to listen. Uh, what's that effect? So, malaking bagay sa kanya. Alam niya na malaking bagay ang, uh, ang perception ng international community sa nangyayari ngayon. So, that is why meron yung... I don't think he's hedging. I think he's just uh, laying out, you know, the possibilities na if they over overplayed this or if they did not uh, come up with a kind of a coherent response, this might have, uh, uh, I think, an impact on the, uh, the international standing of a country that he's now so intent on trying to change uh, image of us. Well, at the same time, he, he also has a local constituency, no? And I think there's a lot of support there as well for their argument that we are a sovereign country and we can do our own investigation. Thank you. What do you think of that? Well, yeah, I mean, that's, um, he plays to the base, to the, his base, he plays to the Filipino crowd and that works, you know? Uh, uh, I'm not saying na hindi naiintindihan ng mga Pilipino ang mga uh, nuances or mga basics ng ICC, but if you tell the public now that, oh, may sabarin niya kami, ba't kayo nakikialam sa amin, that will resonate to a lot of people. Hmm. But again, it is now the challenge for this administration to really be serious about its commitment, international commitment to human rights. Hindi nila pwedeng sabihin sa taong bayan na, uh, walang pakialam ang ICC, but at the same time, they're seeking the approval of the international community for their human rights uh, commitments, uh, quote-unquote, no? Uh, ano yan eh, tawag dito, disingenuous na, na, na argumento yan eh, na sasabihin nila na, uh, you know, everything is fine here, so you shouldn't be uh, hmm. you shouldn't be violating our sovereignty. I mean, all this sovereignty card na ginagamit nila, this is just an excuse to try to duck the ICC investigation. Because yeah. we, we have to keep in mind, the, the Philippines was a member of the ICC for, uh, for hmm. quite some time. And they cannot just disregard 
the, the commitments and the mandates of the ICC while the country was uh, was a member. And I have to point out, ito investigation ng ICC, this is about the cases that happened when the country was a member of the ICC. Mm -hmm. But ginawa yan. So dapat maintindihan ng, uh, ng taong bayan yan na hindi ito pakikialam lang ng isang international court sa mga nangyayari sa Pilipinas. Ang kaya lang naman tayo umabot sa punto na ganito is because nga yung mga domestic mechanisms natin, yung mga domestic courts natin, ay hindi gumagana in terms of addressing the problem with the drug war and the serious human rights abuses. Hey, but to that point, yung sa, yung sa, sa domestic courts natin na bring up mga, and one of the limitations before uh, was that you can't sue the president. Diba? Certainly not yeah. while he was, eh, while, not while he was uh, uh, sitting. And to that point, now you see that argument being added, not just the sovereignty issue, but also the challenge um, and, and uh, even former administration officials, even officials crossing over, saying that, look, now if you want to sue President Duterte, and that's been said explicitly, you have the courts, wala na siyang immunity, why don't you try the court system now? Um, go ahead and challenge it before the courts. It also gives the, the, the government, the current administration, the chance to show their, their openness, their ability, and their willingness to prosecute or to, to at the very least to investigate this within our own mechanisms and our own processes. Tapos wala na yung balakid na hindi mo pwedeng ihabla yung, yung sitting president. What do you say to that? Well, you know, no, I think anybody who feels na kailangan inilang idemanda sa korte si President Duterte uh, for the drug war killings, I, I, I think they're still, you know, they have the right to do that. But it, it is not uh, tipong okay. Uh, these are not mutually exclusive naman uh, pagdating sa point na yan. Kasi mm. itong sa ICC, gumugulong na eh. And napatunayan na hindi nga gumagana yung um, korte natin when it comes to this issue. At yun ang gustong sagutin itong uh, uh, International Criminal Court investigation. Now, kung may magdemanda kay President Duterte, and uh, uh, that's well and good. But also you have to take into account, Robbie, that this is a matter of confidence na rin ng mga, mga biktima ng human rights violation. Do they have the confidence to do it in the, in the domestic courts? Uh, after all that has happened in the past six years, mm. after all the killings and uh, in the, concert, the concerted effort by the government to deny them redress, uh, mahirapan talaga, ang, mahirapan silang uh, to, to come forward and sue anybody. That, uh, that's, ba that's practically the reason why they went to the ICC. Kasi nga, uh, they don't have confidence in the local courts, and they know that the uh, uh, you know uh, the odds are not in their favor. And also, really, to be honest, I mean, you, kung ikaw ang perpetrator ng mga abuses ng ganito, uh, why should anybody expect you to investigate these abuses yourself? And we've seen the capability, the capacity of the of, of the institutions of of this government to scuttle investigations to favor itself. Pero you raised din yon siempre ng kabila no na you haven't exhausted all your legal remedies. Bakit hindi nyo nga idemanda si Rodrigo Duterte and uh, Senator Bato de la Rosa and sino pa yung si, si former Justice Secretary Aguirre who was, who was the Justice Secretary at the time nung tokang bak, baka sabihin nila ganun nga na hindi nyo pa naman sinusubukan eh. Bakit taakyat na dun sa kabila? Well, unang-una, Ma'am Amy, yun namang, uh, itong ICC naman, ha, uh, you know, this case uh, was filed when these people are in power. Yeah. Uh, at uh, hindi ito parang tipong, okay, wala na si Duterte, ba, ba, uh, kalimutan na natin yung case ng ICC. Hindi, because sa patunayan na crimes against humanity were committed. And just because the government is now saying na uh, i-demanda natin itong, meron kayong karapatan ngayon or open ngayon ng mga demanda, against these people doesn't doesn't extinguish the the ICC route it doesn't it doesn't work that way because uh, again this is uh, this is an international uh, mandate and also i think uh, medyo ma mataas na bar yung kailangan uh, uh, i-clear ng mga magdedemanda uh, against kina Duterte at sa mga uh, ibang mga ta ibang mga tao niya in terms of really to satisfy the issue of one credibility and really kung talaga bang uusag itong mga kasong ito and uh, and then you have also to take into account the fact that uh, itong uh, administration ni Mr. Marcos is very very closely linked to uh, the administration before 
I mean, the daughter of the uh, former president is the mm -hmm. vice president now. Uh, you know, they remain practically, uh, for all practical purposes, in power. So, uh, kung ikaw ay isang ordinary yung nanay na namatayan sa drug war, uh, do you have the confidence to do that? Mm -hmm. uh, I, uh, you know, I would be very, very, uh, 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 dito, um, doubtful kung meron na. So that's, that's why this ICC investigation, such as it is, needs to proceed. Mm. Uh, Kaloy, one last uh, question. You're with Human Rights Watch. Human Rights Watch, of course, is an international um, and global organization. I'm just wondering, I mean, with inter the international community knowing international mechanisms uh, and international platforms, how do they see this change in, in government um, as, as w either as a continuation or as an opportunity to bring back um, you know, some arguments for accountability um, and to fight against impunity. What are the opportunities and the risks here um, under a new administration that, as far as you can say, you know, the international community will seize upon these opportunities as well? Well, that's an interesting question, Ravi, because, uh, in fact, there are segments in uh, in the diplomatic sector and in, you know, inter among international actors that perhaps uh, the administration of President Marcos will have some opening um, for a meaningful um, uh, human rights engagement, uh, which is something that did not happen because in the Turkish time, any discussion about human rights, I mean, he, would, he, he would just slam the door on your face. Uh, but uh, under this president, uh, may nakikita yung ibang uh, international actors nga na perhaps, you know, uh, uh, he's not as bad as people think uh, he is uh, based on what his father did before him. Uh, and perhaps uh, baka dito mag-work yung idea na uh, hindi naman siya pareho ni Duterte and he didn't have uh, so much skin in the game, sabi nga nila, during mm. the drug war. And that probably explains why he hasn't been saying a lot of things or practically zero things about human rights and the drug war because you know that is not his issue that is not his campaign that is not his advocacy so uh, uh and and people in the diplomatic sector in the international community uh, look at us look at that as a kind of a, a positive thing because now they see a chance for uh engagement just to give you an idea for instance before duterte uh nung panahon ni duterte i mean I don't think he even met with the UN Human Rights Office in the Philippines or even had a human rights discussion with UN representatives in the Philippines. But Mr. Marcos, one of the few uh, uh, meetings that he, he held before he took uh, his, inaugural, uh, his inauguration is uh, to meet with the UN resident coordinator here, which, which is a huge thing. Mm. Now, you know, we can quibble about what they discussed, but, you know, that sent a signal to Mr. Marcos but also to the international community that things may be different. And this is where I say that the President Marcos should really, uh, you know, take stock sa bagay na yan and take advantage of the, you know, whatever goodwill that's coming out uh, uh, of, the, of all of this. Okay. Kaloy Conde of Human Rights Watch. Kaloy, maraming maraming salamat. Thank you. Thank you, Robbie. Thank you, Mamami. We'll start up a new conversation after the break. Keep it here on One News.
Former President Fidel V. Ramos wore many hats, among them, sportsman, telling us about this side of FPR. Former Bacolod City Mayor and Representative Monico Puentevella, welcome to the program. Mayor Puentevella. Good evening, Mayor. Hello, Amy. Hello, Rodi. Mayang gabi, mayang gabi. Magandang gabi sa lahat. Salamat for inviting me. Apo. Magandang gabi po sa inyo. Kanina nag-uusap kami ni Mayor eh. Because napanood niya, yesterday we started our remembrance of FBR. We talked about him, of course, as a soldier. We talked about him as a civil engineer. Pagkatapos, Lenny De Jesus was here talking to us about how was he really a manager, di ba? As a systems person, complete staff work. Um, and everything, but uh, Mayor Puentevella, you have a, a very uh, a special perspective of President Ramos as a sportsman. Tell us about that and remind the people about this. Maraming salamat, Robi. Mga kababayan, if there is any president who was really unpassionately involved with sports, it is Fidel Valdez Ramos. Mm. Alam nyo naman, you all know that Every day he would have his push-ups. Magyayabang yon. He would be bragging that he could do the push-up 50 times every morning when he was younger and when he was president. I know because when we were playing golf here in Bacolod and anywhere, after that in the dressing room he would make hamon. All the people taking care of the golf club, he would make hamon for them to do the push-ups with with them mm. and he would uh, physically really show them how to and then of course in 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 the spirit naman of national uh, sports uh, sportsman like he was the one responsible for all of those who enjoy the bacolod uh, panaad stadium where the games of the ascals the series national competition international fifa competition were all here in panaad this stadium here was built by the late President uh, Fidel Ramos. Mm. And of course, we, we had, that was in 1998, Robbie, when uh, we celebrated the centennial uh, celebration of the Palarong Pambansa here. Mm. And we, he built, he, we built the stadium. And now for me, it's the most beautiful football uh, arena in the Philippines, maybe better than Rizal Memorial. Mm. Be, uh, go ahead, Ami. Mayor, we all know that uh, FBR loved the goals, no? Tell us about his game. Kumusta siya? Ang, ang alam namin eh, he did business. He, he was working even while playing golf. Kumusta siya? As well, a... when you played golf with him, the phone was always uh, off the, you know, it was always uh, uh, ringing. And I want to let, tell the public, he had the... the well, he had the happiness of playing golf with the Tiger Woods. He brought oh. Tiger Woods to, maybe you, re, you don't remember many listening now, but in, uh, in the, that beautiful uh, golf club in uh, Mimosa in uh, oh. Clark, he played there 18 holes with uh, Tiger Woods. And uh, we were there, Philip Wico and I, we were, I was a commissioner. And I want to tell you honestly a secret. If I have been successful in sports and politics, the, the late president appointed me, Amy, to, the, to be a commissioner in 1990, in 1994, uh, here from Bacolod. He asked me to become one of the commissioners. And then, uh, uh, air up, uh, the president he appointed me. So I spent more than six years in the Philippine Sports Commission. That's why I know that he also played one night with uh, Norman, Greg Norman, uh, uh -huh. Robbie. He would, he would uh, hit the balls. He was even, you know, he na hamon yung pasigrig normal magpa magpa magpalakasa ng bola from one end of the river in Pasig. They would hit the ball and it would cross up to the next to the other property of Malacanang. So talagang he his love was, you know, when it was sports, you know, even our even our uniforms, he would make sure you had the flag all the time. And when you sang the pambansang awit, he was one president that said, no, 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 no. Repeat the song. I want everyone to sing the mm. Pambansang Awit. And we would, because mm. that is uh, the patriotism inside him. And whenever he saw somebody wearing the flag on the T-shirt, on the jacket, oh boy, he would really acknowledge the person wearing that. Mm. That's why 
this uh, leadership in sports. And I want to remind everybody, when he was in uh, the President Malacanang, Robbie, every two years, we would have the sports summit, which was uh, uh, composed of all of us, the national sports leaders, and all the sports representatives of every city and province. We had it in Malacanang. We had one in Baguio, in the Atlas Village. And then we also had one in Ultra, in Ultra. And uh, he would always uh, uh, challenge us uh, as sports leaders. I was one of the commissioners to do our to, to, to put up a master plan in sport for mm. all the local government units to follow. That's why, you know, even look at this bill, you know, pinagyayabang niya yan. Oo oh, nga, uh, hindi nga, Mayor, eh. Ano, niya. Na, na, parang yung, parang hinahanap niya talaga yung physical exercise. I remember one of the striking things. During people power, <laughs> di ba? He woke up yeah. early, took the time para magjogging around Grabe in the middle of uh, in the middle of kaguluhan ng ng people power. Pero nabanggit niyo madalas maghamon ng push up. I'm curious, etong si Mayor Puitebella, baka hindi niyo po naitatanong eh, Philippine uh, uh, Weightlifters Weightlifting Association. <laughs> Kaya siya na po na appoint ni FBR. Pero ang tanong ko po sa inyo, hinahamon kayo na push up. Did you ever have occasion na hamunin siya mag bench press? Do you know how much the president uh, FBR can bench press? Mahirap kasi pag tinalo mo siya, makatanggalin ka sa sports commission noon eh. Kaya pagka, pagka lumangoy siya, maski lumangoy, I would swim with him in Malacanian. Eh, napap, hindi naman nagpapatalo. Talaga talo siguro naman ako. Kasi he was really, he was really used to swimming in the Malacanian pool. Hinahamon kami umaga-umaga. And then he would uh, ask us to run. Eh, mahilig siya magyayabang eh. O being a sportsman. And I want to let you know, Nagtumat yung kanyang pagka-atletik kasi ang asawa niya, badminton mm. champion. Mm. Si Inday Bank, taga Iloilo, Ilongga, kasama ko, kababayan ko. Sa Iloilo, nag he, he got married to a sports lady, champion mm. pa sa badminton. O, kita mo, yung mga kamay niya, hinahamon niyang lahat na mag-ano, mag-handshake na patigasan. The man mm. with the glasses pero walang lens, ha? <laughs> Ay, kumusta yung game nila ni Tiger Woods? Anong resulta? Ano po yun, Amy? Ano yung resulta ng game niya with Tiger Woods? Ano yung game? Ay, game ay, game ay, lang ba yun? Oo, oh, inimbitan niya si Tiger Woods because hmm. he was really fun of inviting the best athletes in the world. So, yes. sa Mimosa kami, uh, binigyan niyang award si Tiger. Tiger was very young, uh, talagang top of the world. Tapos si Greg Norman, top of the world din yan. So, he would always like to challenge. You know, pakita niya na, I'm the president, but tingnan yung katawan, I would outdrive Tiger Woods. Palagay ko nga, pinapauna na lang siya ni Tiger Woods para happy-happy siya eh. Ayan, so, pinapakita eh, natin. Eh, mahilig. O, oh, kita mo yung mga, mga uh, fish bump na yan. Uh, eh, mahilig siya. That's yeah. why, if there was some, the only president who went inside the Philippine Sports Commission building to meet with us, Siya yun. That's why I guess President Bongbong, being from De La Salle Green Hills, and uh, played football with uh, Brother Rolly Dison, my brother-in-law. You know, uh, I'm sure uh, a lot of these uh, programs, master plan na ginawa ni FBR, will also be followed by by the young, uh, the younger uh, President now, uh, Bongbong, because he's the last light. He's been playing football in Green Hills, I know, before. He knows a lot about Palaro. Hmm. Yeah, kanina nga, pinapakita natin sa TV yung si FBR nakikipagkamayan. Like you said, one of his favorite games. And there are probably millions of Filipinos who experience this. Yung kakamayan ni FBR, di niya bibitawan, pahigpitan <laughs> ng, ng grip, di ba? But well, ano, uh, we don't have a lot of time, Mayor Pintavela, but I, I, I'm wondering, both for FBR and also for you, because obviously this is something you shared with him. What does the love for sports do for leadership? It will probably inspire this nation. Sports unites. When Pacquiao fights, the country unites. When we won the Olympic medal, first time in 97 years, this country has been inspired. Now we're winning more medals. Our boxers are winning. Our lifters are winning. Well, I hope our basketball team will improve, no? For FIBA, <laughs> because it's a chance next year. Uh, but, you know, I think uh, MVP naman, Ricky Vargas and Al Panilio are doing everything to, to improve the basketball team, no? The PBS promise. So, 
with the leadership. You know, ang ginagawa kasi, there will be less drugs. Honestly, you know, let you be in sports and not in drugs. This was the message of FBR. And I hope the new president, uh, Bongbo, will carry this because you don't have to rehabilitate or kill these this, uh, addicts. You have to put them inside uh, sports arenas. Even at night, uh, let, the, let the lights on in every plaza, in every municipality, in every town, and every province. Bayara na yung ilaw hanggang hating gabi. Palaruin nyo ng basketball. But when you have nothing at night, maldilim, diyan nagwawala mga bata. But sports can really improve our, uh, uh, our people, can inspire our people, na kaya natin ito. Yung sabi nga ni FBR, kaya natin. Nag-champion, na gold medal na tayo. Ibig sabihin now, even in Paris, I promise you, a silver and a gold in weightlifting. Kaya natin. I want to prove that that is FBR's call. Kaya natin ito. And I thank God that uh, this man helped me with my sport life, my political life. I love this guy. And uh, he did a good job. He did a pretty damn good job. And I'm glad that uh, I will continue doing the sports uh, uh, performance for this country because of the inspiration from uh, the leaders like FBR. Uh, and I'm thankful that you gave me this chance to tell the public that only as a war hero, as a statesman, but really as a sports leader. Yun ang gusto niya, parang mga bata, hindi na magdruga. Pumasok kayo sa sports, kaya natin ito. Ngayon, pahabol ko lang, since you mentioned weightlifting already and the gold medal, sabi ni Hidilin Diaz eh, she wants to focus on her personal life. Does it mean she's retiring or taking a big break from weightlifting or tuloy-tuloy yung training for for the next big games? That's the, that's the beauty of our master plan, Amy. Nagpakasal ang bata ko few days ago in Baguio. I was there, nahuli pa kami ng lindol. Mm. Oo, mm. isa ko sa ninong, ni Heidi. But, you know, you are right. Weightlifting is not forever. And Heidi has done so much for this country. Silver and gold, which might not be duplicated by any other Filipino. But now, I have many more young girls winning medals gold in world championship. I don't even know kung sino nang aking paborito. Ang dami kasi. Ang dami ko na biglang nagiging tatlong gold. You know, and we, I, 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 get, I get them all every, every few months. May bago na namang lalabas. So inspired by the performance of Heidi Lin. So you are right. Uh, I expect Heidi na to try, to try her best because she really wants to be in Paris. But I told her, you know, weightlifting is not forever. Have a child, have a children, enjoy because you have so much blessings in life. My pera, my libre ang kotse, libre ang bahay, libre, libre lahat, she has million. Boy, her reception of her wedding was really extravagant. So, because she wants to enjoy her, her life, her, uh, her money, so she wants to enjoy. That's why you are right, but our master plan is not stopping here. Uh, after this, if, even if I'm not anymore in this earth, in Rolling Hills Memorial Park in Bacolod, we have new, you, we have new girls. Believe me, in Paris and Los Angeles, I've already prepared this girl. It's not a one-shot game because of Heidelin. She's good, but after Heidelin, there are apparent uh, successors. Uh, Vanessa Sarno is one, uh, Macrohon, uh, Addo, uh, Rosie G, they won gold in Mexico recently. So, you know, because of the inspiration, we have seen that Heidi Lee now is very rich. She's got a good life, her family, new house, condo, uh, pati gasolina libre, ang aeroplano libre, but we have new girls. So don't worry because as what FBR taught me before, Kaya, kaya natin ito. We can be the best in the world. That is what uh, FBR and Idolin wants us to follow. Okay, Mayor Monico Puentevelia, sir. Maraming, maraming salamat po. Thank you, Robin, Mayor. Madamo. Amy, damo ko salamat. Stay safe, ha? Robin, mm. damo ko salamat, ha? Mm. God bless. Kaya natin to. Kaya natin. Salamat, salamat. God bless. Magayong mahayang gabi. Thank you. And that's it for the Chiefs. We hope what was discussed here will keep the conversation going. Ako po si Robbie Alampay. Hi, Mami Paminton of the Philippine Star. We are One News, all sides, all the time.